Hello, I'm Keelan Rickard, the Director of Counseling Services at Guilford College, and I'm here to talk with you today about transitions. I'm very grateful to my colleague, Dr. Tasha hicks beckton from North Carolina Central University. She encouraged me to think about the current pandemic as a series of transitions. Uh, and she pointed me in the direction of theorist Nancy Schlossberg, who wrote and developed transition theory back in the 1980s. Uh, and uh, you can do further research on Nancy Schlossberg's transition theory, but one of the main takeaways uh, is that both events and non-events uh, can represent transitional moments. Uh, so examples of events would be starting off the semester at Guilford College and then returning home to your family for the rest of the semester, or uh, you know completing your 12-week and then transitioning into your three-week term and then transitioning into your summer term. Uh, or maybe you were studying abroad at the beginning of the semester and then you abruptly had to return to the U.S. because of the pandemic. Uh, all these things are events that uh, kind of force you into this, this transitional moment. Uh, examples of non-events, these are things that we anticipate and then they don't happen. Uh, so an example would be a, a senior athlete who has been anticipating you know, your final season of your sport uh, and now it's not happening in the way you anticipated or uh, maybe you're just, a, in general, you're a senior, uh, and for the past four and a half, four plus years, you have been working toward this degree, and uh, you've anticipated you know, all the pomp and circumstance of the commencement ceremony, and now that's not happening in the way you anticipated. So again, both the events and the non-events invite us into these transitional spaces. Uh, and you know, these can be moments where you really uh, grow in, in your person, you can uh, really develop resilience as a result of these transitions, uh, and I also want to be realistic about the fact that these transitions can be very painful. Um, you know, so I'm thinking about identity uh, and, you know, the way we develop a sense of self is in relation to other people. You know, so if that these people in our lives are uh, removed from us, then that comes with a sense of loss and a sense of grief. Uh, and then also the places and uh, routines in our lives, those also help us develop a sense of identity. Uh, and so when those things change and, and transition, then, um, you know, again, that can be a, a sen uh, that can come with a sense of grief and loss. Um, so I want to talk a bit about grief. Um, so. Kubler-Ross came up with these, uh, these stages of grief, and uh, you know, there are five stages, uh, and nobody progresses through the stages you know, in a linear, predictable uh, way. You, know, you can go back and forth between different, different stages, but the, the five stages that Kubler-Ross identified were denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance, right? So the, the acronym I use to remember it is DABDA. Uh, but I also like to add a couple um, so, and make it drabda. So the D would be denial. An example of denial is, you know, um, just, I can't believe this is happening or, you know, those sorts of thoughts, that's denial. And, you know, chances are you're not gonna get stuck in denial because, uh, you know, eventually you are uh, forced to uh, accept the reality of, of the loss. Um, the R that I'm adding is regret, you know, so, uh, you know, if I'd only known that this was going to be my last semester on campus, then I would have done this. Uh, oh, if I'd only known that I was going to lose my grandmother, I would have called her much more frequently. You know, so all those regrets that we face uh, when we lose a person or place or thing. Um, the A, again, is, is anger. Um, and so, you know, I don't have to explain further what, what anger is. Um, the B, uh, like I said, was bargaining. So. Uh, you know, if only I could do, uh, if only I could have another moment with this person, then I would change my life, you know, I would give anything to have this person back, you know, so that's bargaining. Um, the B that I would add is blame, you know, so when we lose a person or a place, then we, we kind of cast about for, for someone to blame, right? Um, so, so we have to be careful that we don't get stuck in that, that place where we're, we're blaming. Then the, the D is depression. Um, again, I don't have to explain what depression is. And the final A is acceptance. Uh, you know, so after you've kind of processed through the, the reality of the loss, then you eventually come to this place of acceptance. And, and that's the goal of working through grief. Um, but anyway, you know, if you find yourself just really stuck in one of these stages, or especially if you're stuck in the depression phase, 
Um, you know, I would encourage you to surround yourself with people who are supportive. Um, you know, I always think of grief as the most painful of human emotions. Uh, you know, so with with kind of a, a standard depression, sometimes crying and and, and sleeping, so, sometimes those things can kind of help reset your mood. Whereas with grief, uh, it, it feels like no amount of crying, no amount of talking about it really uh, helps. Um, you know, eventually it will help, um, and, and uh, but it may not feel like it at first because again, it's so painful. Um, so I always tell folks that the, the, the one thing that helps with grief is time. Um, you know, so you have to give it some time. Um, and for some people, talking helps as well. Uh, but, but really time is the thing that's going to be helpful with grief. Uh, anyway, so if you find yourself really stuck in this grief and having trouble processing it or maybe not having supportive people in your life uh, who can help you through the grief, then I would encourage you to reach out to a counselor. Um, you know, so the, the counseling center at Guilford College is available for, college, for Guilford College students. The number here is 336-316-2163 uh, to, to arrange a phone session. Uh, you could also email counselingcenter at guilford.edu. So again, the phone number 336-316-2163 and the email address counselingcenter at guilford.edu. But above, above all, please take care of yourselves and uh, reach out if there's anything we can help you with.